that yet, Coach. Will you have any more clarity on whether or not you think Denzel will practice or be able to participate in this game on Monday night? Yeah, Denzel and Cordero Hodge won't practice today, Mary Kay, but they're both uh, progressing. So there's, you're saying so, there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite movies ever. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks, Mary Kay. Scott Petrick, you have our next question. Kevin, when you look back at week one, just how tough was it not having seen your guys on the field against an opponent? And then how much better do you know all the players, you know, 12 games later? Yeah, I, I think I would not overstate that, Scott. We were ready to play. We got beat in week one. Uh, I think and all of the teams, all 32, gather information in every game they play. So I would hope we're, we're better understanding who we are uh, here in in our 13th game. Uh, and, and I think that just increases uh, every game. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next is Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin. Uh, Jarvis Landry uh, is, you know, he's reaching another milestone here. He, he's uh, you know, one of a few guys who's had like 71 games with, with five catches or more. What is it? take to be as consistent as he's been throughout his career and as you've gotten to know him um, does it all add up why he's able to do that just in terms of the preparation everything that goes on behind the scenes yeah you hit it on the head right there I think it's everything that goes on behind the scenes allows that uh, he plays through injuries he plays hurt uh, you all know how hard he plays and then he's very diligent about his job so we move him around. He's a versatile football player for us. We ask him to do a lot of things, and there's details that come with that. So the way he prepares, stays on top of the game plan, uh, I have not been around uh, many smarter players than Jarvis. Thanks, Nate. Aditi Kinkabala, you have our next question. Hi. One of the things that Coach Harbaugh said yesterday is that you stay very true to what you want to do on offense, defense, and special teams. So how difficult is it to do that? And what is the biggest challenge from week to week to making sure that you don't vary from what your central philosophy is? Yeah, I think maybe what Coach Harbaugh is speaking to is, is we have our schemes, we have our foundation uh, on offense, defense, and special teams. And then we would hope that each game we tailor that foundation or that scheme to that game plan. Uh, so we, we really work hard during the week as coaches to, to give our guys a plan that they can go execute at a high level and execute it fast and free of a lot of thinking. Uh, so uh, that's ultimately our goal is, is putting a game plan together that the guys can, can really sink their teeth into. Thank you, Aditi. Tom Withers, we'll go to you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Coach. Coach, you guys are 12 games into what's been a long season and a long year for everybody. And I know you always check in, you know, in terms of physically. What, what do you do as a coaching staff to check on the guys in terms of mental fatigue and just making sure that they're, you know, they're where they need to be for you guys? Yeah, I think that's a good point, Tom. You've heard about the rookie wall. Uh, and I think really for everybody and, and how this season's going, uh, all these Zoom meetings, there can be a monotony to this, obviously, not this Zoom meeting. But uh, I think it's important for us as coaches to keep things fresh, to keep it lively. Uh, when we work, we work. Uh, we can have fun doing it. And I think that's just, uh, again, our job as coaches to make sure that, that we're reaching them in a variety of ways. And just some housekeeping, where are we with Wyatt? We're, uh, I'd say, right where, where we need to be. So we'll, we'll see where we are towards the end of the week. Towards the end Thank of the weekend, you. I should say. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Scott Patrick, you're next. Hey, Kevin, we talked to Richard yesterday, and it just does he is he a studying influence for you guys? It seems like he just kind of is always where you want him to be and catching, you know, the passes thrown his way. Yeah, that's who he's been since I've been here. Uh, you know, early in the in the season it was hard to get him active just with where we were numbers wise and special teams and all those type of things. And he never wavered. He practices really hard, stays on top of, of his job and what he's supposed to do. Great teammate, uh, supportive guy. So I'm, I'm happy that he's getting his opportunities. He's making the most of them. 
and he said part of his success lately is because you know what he does well. Um, so like, what have you identified as, okay, this is how we can use him best. Yeah, I think he's versatile, Scott. We can line him up in different places. There's obviously a rapport between him and Baker. Uh, he's in the right spot at the right time and, and, and makes the catch. So uh, I think we're going to be counting on him here in this game and the next one. And, and, and he understands that. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Back to Aditi Kinkabwala. In many ways, Lamar Jackson is still a young player and this is still a young offense. So from same as you said that your team has grown from week one to week 13, in what ways is this Ravens offense different now than when you saw it week one? Yeah, I think again, their, their, their scheme is, is multifaceted. Uh, they've had a couple of guys out due to injury. They're getting some guys back. So I think you see in different games, mm -hmm. Uh, they'll employ certain schemes maybe over others, but just the way they attack a defense in multiple personnel groupings, multiple run schemes, uh, that we know they can make big plays in the pass game. I just think it's a really difficult scheme to defend, and, and it really goes back to us making sure we know our job, and then we got to do our job, but it's a tall task. So as you talk about getting guys back, Calais Campbell came back, but he didn't really play much. Brandon Williams was back. How do you prepare when you don't really know how they're using their personnel? Or do you assume that you'll face them all game? Yeah, I think part of it is you got to assume they're going to have everybody back. But, you know, that's where we really get to game day. Once those inactives come in, we, we discuss as coaches and figure out where we think those guys are lining up and we'll line up our guys accordingly. Thank you, Didi. Nate Ulrich, go to you. When we touched on this a little bit with Mike Prefer uh, earlier, just the fact that you guys have been in so many tight games, and you guys actually have a you know NFL best record six and zero in, in games decided by six or fewer points. So, um, what do you think that says about kind of your your group? And is there any way to prepare a team for that, or is it just something that you know has to kind of evolve as you go? I think in all the games, Nate, but particularly the close ones that you're talking about, I think situational football becomes key. And we stress here a lot of having shared situational awareness. So that's where I, I give the players a ton of credit for everybody being into the game, understanding what we're doing, why we're doing it. Because in those moments, it's really, really important that everybody's on the same page. And on Prefer's end, he was talking about um... – you know, the hands team, because when you're, you're in those tight games, it comes up. Um, how, how crucial has it been for you guys to be able to execute? We saw it twice the other day. Yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. Uh, you know, we, we spend time on it during the week. Those are big moments in the game. We, we've had our fair share of hands team this year, and the guys have done a nice job. And, you know, we know it's going to continue to show up. It's what happens in the NFL with these games being so close. So we, uh, we really rely on the players to understand their job then they, they have to go do their job, and they've done that. Thank you, Nate. We'll go to Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, even in the, the little bit of practice that we get to watch each day, it, it seems like there is that emphasis on just getting the ball out and, and you know, just fumble drills and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it seems like more than I can ever remember in terms of really focusing on getting those takeaways. Uh, so can you just talk about the emphasis that you guys put on that? And does it seem like uh, Joe and his guys are, are really, you know, just putting their money where their mouth is in that regard? Yeah, Mary Kay, that's something we've been talking about since we first got together. The players understand uh, that our defense is all about the ball. And, and we do, you know, we talk about takeaways, not turnovers. We want to go take it away. And I think offenses are so keen on, on knowing that they're, they're, the ball security uh, is great, but I think you see our guys raking, stripping, punching, tipping balls. I mean, that's just such a big part of who we are. And I just believe that she achieved what she emphasized. So we make sure we emphasize it uh, in practice every day. And in your experience, I mean, do you see it being almost practiced more than, than what you've seen in the past? Yeah, I mean, I would only tell you from our, from our perspective that it's, it's very important. So we make sure it's a big part of what we do. You know, we never want to say we're about something and not do it. Thanks. Thank you, Mary Kay. Scott Patrick is next. 
Kevin, I want to follow up on what Nate asked you about Jarvis. Um, how much is his couple of big games in a row due to him just feeling much better than he did in the first half of the season? Yeah, Jarvis is a receiver. He likes the ball in his hands. Uh, that's not breaking news. But uh, he's a great teammate. Uh, just watch him block. Uh, watch him finish his blocks. I just uh, That's what we're about here. Uh, being a great teammate, so he's a gives a great example to the entire team in that regard. Uh, but he's a receiver who does a great job with the ball in his hands. So we're tr trying to find ways to to do that. Uh, so I think it, it's always great when a guy gets some production in these games. I think it, it definitely gives him a boost. Maybe I miss. I meant healthier. The fact that he's healthier now is that able. Is that making him? You know, able to catch the ball more often than he was early. Yeah, I mean, he, he was coming off of. Uh, off-season surgery to start the season. Then he had, a, you know, that rib deal, which is that affects everything when you have uh, anything with your ribs. So, yeah, I think once he's getting healthy, healthier, because nobody's 100%, but I, I think you are seeing his, uh, his game uh, improve.